Ah, so happy to see you back. Actually, the last section on unfounded sets is one of the most complex of the whole lecture. So I was a bit afraid to lose you. But anyway, you're back. That's great. The good news is, however, now that we worked our way through unfounded sets and actually discovered the concept of a greatest unfounded set, the section on the well-founded operator that actually relies on the greatest unfounded set is mainly about plug and play. So what we do is we take the fitting operator and we replace the second sub-operator that assigns atoms to false by the greatest unfounded set. And this gives us the well-founded operator. Anyway, so this is more or less what we do in this section. And of course, once we did the plug and play, we examine the uh, properties and see whether this helps us to do propagation in ASP solvers. So let us begin by making this claim of plug and play more precise and summarize a little bit the ideas that lead to the well-founded operator. Anyway, you may remember from the last section on unfounded sets that the first condition in the definition of an unfounded set is exactly the same as in the sub-operator of the fitting operator that is in charge of making atoms false. So the hope is, and actually we have, we've more or less seen this in the last section, that we can make more atoms false, and notably those that lack uh, an acyclic derivation. Okay, so with this in mind, then it's this, the idea of plug and play is straightforward. We take fittings operator, we keep the sub-operator that is in charge of making atoms true, but we replace the one that assigns false to atoms by the yuppie operator uh, that results in the greatest unfounded set of the program in the context of the current partial uh, interpretation. So that's the idea of plug and play. And in this way what we do is we actually assign false to an atom if it belongs to the greatest unfounded set. And keep in mind this includes the atoms made false by the fitting operator. Okay, so with these informal um, ex explanations at hand, let's define this guy. So we, we call omega pi the well-founded operator and uh, the definition I think is, is obvious, right? We keep the first sub-operator of the fitting operator and replace the second one by the UP operator that gives us the greatest unfounded set. Okay, now this is more or less the definition and the first observation that we can make is that this well-founded operator gives us at least as many conclusions as the fitting operator and hopefully more. And that's more or less what this says here. Good, now that we derived the operator, let's just summarize again and just define it once and for all. This is just to give you a self-contained definition of the well-founded operator, where I spell out the first and the second operator. So again, this is the same as in the fitting operator, where we determine atoms that can already been uh, found to be true. And here, this is the second, the alternative definition of the uh, unfounded set, or the greatest unfounded set, where we first compute all possible atoms and then by subtracting this from the atoms in the program um, obtain the impossible atoms in, in view of the current uh, partial interpretation and this is the greatest unfounded set. Well, and together these two guys give us the well-founded operator. So anyway, I cut it and pasted this slide also in the in the extra slides and the same with the fitting operator so that you have these uh, just as definitions uh, to, to work with. Okay, now let's have an example and see this guy in action. So let us return to our good old running example and apply the associated well-founded operator to an arbitrary partial assignment or to an arbitrary partial interpretation actually. And well, here I've chosen one that makes C true and no atoms false. Okay, so let's apply the well-founded operator of this program to this partial assignment. And this is what we get. So keep in mind that we really only know that C is true and no atoms have been detected to be false right now. Everything else is unknown. So in this case, Let's first look what the, the operator makes true, even though this is redundant and we've already seen this with the fitting operator. Well, one more time doesn't hurt. So of course we have our good old fact A and of course this must be true in the result and it is. And actually we see that there is actually no other true atom. How come? Well, uh, here we don't know about A in our partial assignment. Hence we cannot decide this rule. 
Same reason here, we cannot decide this rule. Uh, given that C is actually true, this rule is blocked, hence we cannot derive D. And similarly, we do not know anything about B or E, hence none of these two rules apply. Hence, we get A. Now, what about the negative uh, atoms here with D and F? Well, we see that C is true, hence this rule here is blocked. It cannot apply, it's inapplicable, and it's the only rule that gives us D. Hence, D uh, must be false. And this is actually already what the fitting condition, the first condition of the unfounded set tells us, or the fitting operator, what the fitting operator will tell us. In the same way, actually, uh, F does not occur in any head of any rule. And again, the first condition, the fitting condition, or will make us uh, this atom, atom false. And we have D and F that are false. And here there is actually nothing that actually happens beyond the fitting operator. Everything is still uh, detected by the components that are the same as in the fitting operator. So this is different in the second case, um, where now, where we start from A being true and D and F being false, that's the argument uh, that we have here, that's the partial interpretation that we look at. And now additionally, actually, since A is true and D is false, this rule here applies and we can also derive C in addition to A. And that's what we get here. And now the intriguing thing is actually now, unlike with the fitting operator, we can also deduce that E is false. Hmm, how does this work? Okay, so what do we have? We have that A is true. And since A is true, this rule here is inapplicable. Hence, the only rule that would give us B is inapplicable. Hence, B is not derivable. Thus, B must be false. It must belong to the greatest unfounded set. So in the same way, uh, given that uh, F appears in no head, as we've just argued, F must be false as well. So B and F uh, are false by more or less by, by, by fitting mechanisms and they must belong to the greatest unfounded set. Now what about E? Well, since, since uh, B must belong to the greatest unfounded set, this rule actually satisfies the second unfounded set condition, the unfounded, well, the unfounded set condition that says that we rule out rules whose positive body belongs to the unfounded set. This is obviously the case uh, with E, right? If we cannot deduce E by means of E, and now also with this rule here, because E depends on B, and we have just detected that B must belong to the unfounded set. Hence, there's also no support for E left. Both rules are ruled out by the second condition of the unfounded set definition, and E must belong to the unfounded set as well. So, this was a bit my hand-waving explanation of things. Actually, for both of these steps, I produced a Blueboard video, which hopefully actually goes still a little bit more in details and, and, and tells you how to really rigorously uh, compute the um, greatest unfounded set in both cases. Well, then the operator actually goes on and on, and actually after well, four applications, we are back not to square one, but we are back to square three. So you see it's also starting to oscillate, and so more or less here we will just go back and forth between these two uh, results here, and that's actually how this, it, how this um, continued iteration continues. Okay, so this was the well-founded operator of our good old example uh, in action. And I hope you got a bit more about the mechanics. Now let's go more or less through the same steps that we went with the fitting operator and see what happens now that we have this, this pimped uh, operator that is almost like fitting just a little bit more. Yeah, analogously to the section on the fitting operator, we now define the well-founded semantics in terms of iterated uh, applications of the well-founded operator. That is, the zeroth iteration, uh, when actually the operator is not applied, just projects out the input, so the input is projected on the output, and the I'm plus first uh, iteration of the operator is defined as the application of the operator to the ith application of the operator. Well, all this is all a bit cold coffee, right? Uh, because you've seen this on the TP operator, on the fitting operator, and now it's just the same on the well-founded operator. And then again, just as uh, with the fitting operator, we define the well-founded semantics, 
as the limit uh, of the application of this of the well-founded operator but starting from the empty partial assignment where everything is unknown and again if our program is finite actually this will not run forever this will terminate the construction will get a fixed point where nothing is added and then the last result actually will be the same as the union uh, of all the uh, of all the, of all the respected iterative variants Okay, all this is just analogous to what you've seen with the fitting operator so let's, and the fitting semantics. Now let's look at our example again. So here we go again with our good old running example. You may remember that this example has two stable models, one containing A and C and one containing A and D. But let's actually see how far the well-founded semantics takes us as opposed to the fitting semantics. So, as with the fitting semantics, we start uh, from the empty partial interpretation, the one where every, all the atoms are assigned uh, unknown, and then we keep applying the um, unfounded set, no, the well-founded no, well set operator until we reach a fixed point, and this fixed point is then also the limit, and the limit of it, that is the union of all the iterative variants, is then the well-founded model. And both coincides and what is the fixed point of the computation and the limit because we have a finite logic program. So in this case, this construction always reaches a fixed point and this is then also the limit. Okay, I zip it now and let's, let's have a quick look at the computation here. So again, we start from the empty partial interpretation. In the first iteration, we find out that A must be true and F must be false, which is obvious because A is a fact and F appears nowhere among the heads of the program, hence there's no chance to derive it. And then once we know that A must be true and F must be false, we get this very interesting greatest unfounded set that contains B, E and F, and I think we discussed this in length uh, before. Keep in mind that we can determine that B and F must be in the greatest unfounded set right away, more or less by the first condition of the unfounded set, which uh, is the same as in the negative sub-operator of the fitting operator. So more or less this is fitting mechanics, right? That tells us that B must be false because this rule here is blocked and F must be false because there's not even a rule that gives it to us. Once we know that B must be in the greatest unfounded set, this rule here is inapplicable. Right? And of course this rule here is self-referential, so if we test whether B, E and F is the greatest unfounded set, this rule can't help and this rule can't help either, hence E must belong to it as well. Right? And this is then the greatest unfounded set. So then in the next iteration we get nothing new, we've reached a fixed point and this guy is then our well-founded semantics. Okay, good. So I hope I didn't, well, uh, miss pronounce too many well-founded as unfounded, as fitting or whatever, but well, it's all analogous. So let's keep on doing analogous stuff and just fix some properties that we already observed with the fitting operator and the fitting semantics. Here we go. So the iterative variants of the well-founded operator are monotonic in the sense that whenever we go from one iteration to the next, we can never lose conclusions. Either we get the same conclusions or perhaps some more, just as our interesting conclusion that E is false in the previous example. Also, as the fitting semantics, the well-founded semantics is non-conflicting, non, non so we can never produce a conflict. Uh, the true and the false atoms are always disjoint and in general it's not total and of course we've seen this here too keep in mind that we have two stable models one containing c and one containing e and the well-founded semantic well-founded semantics cannot resolve it it all always needs one partial interpretation and it more or less stops before such ambiguous situations, right? Hence, neither the truth value of C nor of D can be determined and this guy remains partial. Okay, and then last but not least, in the same way as the fitting operator is weaker than the well-founded operator, also the fitting semantics is weaker than the well-founded semantics is, the well-founded semantics produces at least as many conclusions as the fitting semantics and, if we're lucky, some more. 
Okay, now that this is again the, the little package on the well-founded semantics, let's start looking at how this well-founded operator can help us to design propagation in ASP solvers. So, just as before, let's inspect the fixed points again. So, first of all, the good news is that just as the TP operator and the fitting operator, also the well-founded operator is monotonic. And once an operator is monotonic on such, a, on such a lattice, we can draw on results from the literature and learn quite a lot. So, what about the fixed points? Here's again just the definition of a fixed point to make this self-contained. A fixed point of the well-founded operator of a program is one that given as an input, well, results also as an output. So what this theory on fixed points and mon on monotonic operators then tells us is that actually the well-founded semantics is the least well-founded fixed point. And this means that we can compute the least well-founded fixed point by starting from the empty partial interpretation where everything is unknown and iterating our way up. And once it stops, we have computed the least, well, we have computed the well-founded semantics and this is the least well-founded fixed point. Now this guy is least, hence it is contained in all other fixed points. And again, this is the second bullet here. And this is what makes this guy so interest, interesting. And in particular, now comes the, 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 the big bang, uh, the total fixed points. Uh, correspond to the stable models of the program. So more or less, when we compute by iterating from the empty partial interpretation the least well-founded well fixed point, we know that everything that is true and false in this least well-founded fixed point must also be true and false in the total well-founded fixed points and they, in particular the, the true atoms there, are the stable models of the program. Right? So this is really cool and now actually we, we get a fit while with the fitting operator we always ended up with the supported models and we wouldn't know whether they were stable or not. But here it's clear these guys really uh, have a clear relationship to the stable models of a program. Okay, let's look at an example. This is too good to be true, right? So here we are back with our running example along with its well-founded semantics. And we just learned actually that this well-founded semantics is the same as the least well-founded fixed point of the program that makes, in our case, A true and B, E and F false. Now again, what is interesting about this guy, it is contained in all other fixed points, notably in all other total fixed points. And there are two of them. And here they are. And well, what is I think obvious to you meanwhile is that they correspond to the stable models of the program or better, the, their true parts A and, A and C and A and D represent the stable models of our program. And just to, to check before uh, uh, going on that the least fixed point is contained in each of them, so pairwisely, so A is, is, tr is the only true atom in the least fixed point, it's contained in this guy and in this guy and similarly B, E and F are contained in both of them here, here and here. So that's all pretty cool because we now actually see that this well-founded fixed point really provides us with the characterization of stable models. Well, mathematically speaking, they correspond to the total well-founded fixed points. But again, this now gives us, I repeat myself, a characterization of the stable models and let's now see how we can use this for propagation. So it's good to know that if you give me a total interpretation I can use the well-founded operator to check whether it's a stable model simply by applying it to it and when I get the total interpretation out again it's a fixed point and it must be a stable model. Right, but this is not how, not how it works, right? If we first have to compute these guys and usually we start from nothing, we don't know anything and we start from this empty partial interpretation. Hence the question is, uh, when we apply this well-founded operator, does it preserve the stable models? Well, presumably it does because actually we've already seen with the fitting operator that the fitting operator is stable model preserving. So the idea is when you have a partial interpretation that more or less approximates and has stable models in between, right? Then you apply the operator and you squeeze the approximation, then you have not lost any stable models. They are still in between. 
Okay, and now analogously to what we have done with the fitting operator or what we've seen with the fitting operator also, the well-founded operator is stable model preserving. So whenever you start with the, with the uh, partial interpretation and you apply the fitting operator with it, also the resulting interpretation still approximates the same stable models. And that's made precise here, again, as we've seen with the fitting operator. So if the true atoms of the partial interpretations are in the stable model and none of the false atoms is in the stable model, that is, this stable model is approximated by the partial interpretation, then the same result holds for the resulting um, partial interpretation that is obtained from the first one by applying the well-founded operator. So, good. So we do not lose any stable models. And this actually means that we can use the well-founded operator to approximate stable models, so starting from the empty partial interpretation, applying the well-founded operators, all stable models will remain uh, um, approximated, right? We will not lose any. And so we can also use it as a blueprint for propagation in ASP solvers. And what is better now is when our uh, c uh, computation at the end reaches a total uh, interpretation, we can check by applying the well-founded operator uh, and checking whether it's a fixed point that it is in fact a stable model. While before with the fitting operator, when we applied the fitting operator, we were only sure that it is a supporter model, but we didn't know whether it is stable or unstable. But this is now guaranteed, and that's actually the great news with this, um, with this well-founded operator. And in fact, uh, the well-founded operator is mostly applied also in ASP solvers as a blueprint for propagation. In fact, it's a bit more refined in the sense that these operators mainly do what is called forward propagation, so you look at the rules along the arrow, but sometimes you can, you can also make inferences by looking backwards, but this does not really add to the strength or to the power of the propagation. This just gives you some shortcuts. And this is, these are things actually that work very nicely uh, that one can explain on program completion, but we will do this later on when really looking at, at how propagation and how solvers are designed. I just wanted to say that yes, the well-founded operator is a measure for the strength of propagation and it is usually implemented like this, but sometimes there are some more inferences that give you some shortcuts and these guys are called backward propagation. So. I think we made a big step towards the computation, but I still owe you something, you may remember. So what does this well-founded operator and well-founded semantics mean when we look at the other characterization or the other representation of partial assignments? And we will actually go not back to the future, but back to the past and rediscover something we've already seen. So suspense, <laughs> be with me. I'm afraid I can picture you very well shouting out, I knew it! Because indeed, once we change the representation of the partial interpretation and we go back to lower and upper bounds where L actually represents the true atoms and U represents the possible atoms and one is contained in the other, then actually the well-founded uh, operator can be defined like this. And that's something, of course, we've already seen in the computation part where we looked at computation from first principles, where we, where we came up with a, with a propagation method, a propagation algorithm known as expand. And this actually worked exactly by using the consequences of the reduct. So here it is. And uh, so in the end, we now look back to something that we have already seen before. And um, I think it's interesting to do it that way. And I like it very much. But again, I think if I had only given you this right away, all the, the subtleties, the, the techniques in, in the definition uh, had not been clear, right? It's a bit the same as, as the characterization, the alternative characterization of the fitting operator, where we had more or less lost the correspondence to uh, completion. But somehow all these things fall into place and they're all aligned and of course go for uh, for stable model semantics in the end. And of course, also if we define the well-founded operator this way, the least fixed point of this operator corresponds to the well-founded semantics and the total fixed point corresponds to the stable models. Okay, so I hope you like this uh, uh, section. I think it's, it's, it's complex but interesting and uh, I hope you got some of it. 
I know that I had some uh, misspellings inside, but then I thought, ah, oh, well, um, even in, 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 in course, in, in real life, I, I'm not flawless, right? It's even, it's even worse, right? So anyway, I hope you don't mind too much. Let's wrap up this section with it in this way, and let's just sum up by some things to remember.